now that we've kind of centered ourselves and um, we, now that we've been brought together as a group, uh, we're going to move on to the next section of, of today. So I hope that you got a chance to look into the material posted on to D2L. I hope you were able to reflect and submit your like one page reflections as well. Um, today we're talking about how to translate, well, how to first find which major you'll be focusing on and how to translate that into a career. And so you're gonna hear from a couple of the TAs. Um, I'll, I can start it off, I'll go really quickly about how I came to my major and where I'm seeking, where I'm gonna go with it in the future. So uh, I am currently a double major in applied diplomacy and sociology. Uh, it took six major changes and transferring colleges to get here. I started off, I wanted to math, major in math to be a professor. When I graduated high school, I was really good at calculus. I was like, cool, math's great. I found out math's not that great, it's really hard. Um, and so where I found a home was in the social sciences department, anthropology, sociology. And so I didn't like read college where I went at first, I transferred to DePaul. And what I really did to find my major was just talk to counselors. There's so many cool counselors and advisors and all these people who are resources for you at DePaul and at every school, any school that you might go to. And so I spoke to my sociology advisor about other programs that are related to sociology. I, I for a long time was majoring in African and Black diaspora studies, which I found another home in. And so just being around students of color, professors of color, learning that history meant so much to me. And so I actually just a couple months ago found out about the applied diplomacy program. And so it's a segue into diplomacy and other professions in that area. And so I'm also doing a graduate program to become a teacher um, recognized by the state of Illinois. So currently I have two undergraduate majors and I'm working on my graduate work um, to be a teacher. So I'm hoping to translate all of this into education and to become a high school teacher on the international level, traveling around like how I did when I lived in Brazil um, for my high school career. So it took six major changes, a transfer to school. It took probably three or four dozen hours of meetings with advisors and friends, my parents, everybody around me who I could just talk to about what I'm interested in, but that's where I got to where I am. So yeah, um, let's hear from some more TAs. How did you guys find your major and what are you hoping to do with it in the future? Um, I'll go. Um, so it's pretty ironic because I was once in you guys' shoes as well. Um, and Kate and I always like to talk about this story, but. I was also a College Connect student. Um, beforehand, I wanted to major in like software engineering or uh, computer science. Um, I still am in that branch, but now I major in cybersecurity. Um, and beforehand in College Connect, we actually had a program with dealing with cybersecurity and Ariana was actually my peer guy, it's crazy. Um, and uh, with that, so just in that program, um, I found a very high interest with how everything goes with that. Um, just breaking into certain things, protecting things, um, all in a technological sense. Um, I thought that was really cool. And you get a really kick out of it when you actually complete and defend something. Um, it's, it's, it was really cool to me. Um, I always wanted to do something in the technical aspect. That was just me. And I just had a passion in doing it. And with now everything advancing into that technological field, I was like, yeah, this is totally somewhere I want to be. And uh, I know I can be somewhere good financially. Um, and in the future, I might want to go federal with it. Um, like I said, uh, FBI, maybe, or the National Security Agency, one or the other. Um, or working for, like, some firm. I don't know, man. But other than that, um, that's where I kind of grew uh, my love for my major. Honestly, was actually doing this program. So, yeah. And um, DePaul is great for this program with the CDM Center and so forth and so on. So yeah, that's where I kind of just grew, but hopefully I do branch out to other and different things, but yeah, that's, that's my story on how I got my uh, cybersecurity major. All right, more TAs, who's next? Who wants to share? Sure. I can go next. Um, so actually um, me and uh, Sam actually went to the same high school. Um, this is before high school. Uh, so right now I'm actually majoring in uh, accounting. 
but before that, um, I had this sixth grade teacher who actually used to be um, a former accountant. And, you know, he used to tell us about, like, his life before he was a teacher. Like, I could not imagine this guy just, like, because he was so charismatic. He was so, like, you know, endearing and, and, and very caring. And I just always imagine, like, people who work, like, nine to fives, like, you know, um, you know, like robots, you know. So, um, you know, my family expected me to not go to school and, and you know, work with them and, you know, construction and, and, and things like that. And um, I didn't really see myself going to school at the time. Um, but this teacher actually inspired me to, um, you know, work harder in school and, and actually want to pursue um, college uh, starting from high school. You know, he told me that it all starts from there. And then um, that's when I just started going ham in high school. Um, and I knew that I wanted to major in business um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I came in as a business like undecided. Um, and then I decided just to go with finance um, because I knew that later on I can like switch off to other, you know, general major branches. And I finally decided that I wanted to do accounting um, very recently. Um, you know, just last quarter. Um, and yeah, so this, this is where I'm at. I'm hoping to hopefully uh, graduate um, still on time um, by uh, July, the spring of 2022. And I want to become an accountant. Uh, I want to work for one of the big four. Um, and I want to end up uh, hopefully career-wise, maybe end up doing uh, like either like, you know, data analysis or um, looking for like fraudulent um, like fraudulent, uh, you know, patterns and stuff like that and, and, and people's, you know, taxes and stuff like that. So that's all, that's where I'm hoping to go with my career. Did you mention that you're also a College Connect alum, Jorge? Oh yeah, actually, yeah. I've also a, known each other for many, many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've actually got connected uh, in College Connect. I did uh, art and activism. So if you guys don't know, I'm part of the animation class. I have a bunch of sketchbooks from high school. I used to be an artist, uh, like really like dedicated, like, you know, like art activism. Um, that's still like something I do on the side um, as like one of my hobbies. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I do, I know Kay for, for a very long time. And that's actually how I got connected um, to DePaul and how I learned to basically like, I really love my experience at DePaul. So that was one of the major factors of me like choosing the pause the right school for me uh just because like i already knew like i wanted to go there when i was there you know and uh yeah thank you so much uh kate for everything you've done for me um and and, and thank you no i wasn't fishing for compliments i just wanted them to know that you are one of our alums just like sam um, like fishing the you case. guys <laughs> at the poll one day maybe and then you can tell those stories that you, your whole journey to college started with us during high school during a summer at a weird college connect program online so just saying all right who's next who else knows me forever yesenia knows me forever yes i do uh hello i'm yesenia went to curie um so when so like your college process you know you apply to schools i applied to 36 nothing crazy um i no actually that was crazy i overdo things but um my last semester i finally decided on DePaul. and when you apply to colleges you apply like with a major so i applied with health science so i'm a senior and this is like what around um probably like april may and i changed my major already like not even being in college already i changed my major still being in high school to marketing so uh that kind of sets you up for like how your college is going to be so I, I ended up changing it to like 11 different things um mostly all in business but i went from like you know health science to marketing to finance to back to marketing marketing with spanish why do i need spanish I own international policy maybe i should double major maybe i should double major with a minor how about two minors no that's a little too much go back to one major um it's a lot but finally this past like two quarters um it really hit me that i don't need to do too much i need to relax and you know i can't be everything so now i'm just 
you know, majoring in integrated marketing education with a minor in finance instead of double majoring. And I know, yes, we were all cups and sometimes we need to chill. So I decided to chill. Uh, we'll be graduating this coming fall. Um, still graduating early, thankfully. Shout out to IB, really helped me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot and you're not alone. Um, just like, you know, Kaylin and I, we changed so much uh, around in our majors, but you'll eventually get it. And if you don't, um, your major does not define what career you're going to do. So if you pick, you know, art, it doesn't mean, oh, you have to do something in art. You could be a consultant for some kind. You know, you could go into communication. Um, so don't worry with that. Um, as far as my career choice, <laughs> Ding, 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 um, military. So that's what I am thinking about doing. Um, so I'm actually trying to commission into the Navy to become a Naval officer. You do need a bachelor, so it's different than enlisting. Um, I decided to go in this route uh, for many different reasons. One, to gain a lot of skills and characteristics that I feel like I lack. Uh, for one, I definitely feel like I lack discipline, um, you know, inner and physical strength. So. And also it would be such a great opportunity for me to uh, be in a leadership position like no other, uh, leading enlisted sailors. So um, there's a lot of things that led me to this career choice. I'm currently still applying towards the end of my application. So now it's pretty much a waiting game. Um, and yeah, so if anybody has any questions about, you know, IB, military, changing 50,000 times and applying to like everything, uh, hit me up. <laughs> Deja, what you got? What you got, Deja? Uh, I'm calling you out. Why do you have to call me out? <laughs> um, my major is sociology with a concentration in crime, law, and criminology. And I have a double minor in peace, justice, and conflict studies and criminology. Um, it was a long road to getting here. I changed my major six times. Um, when I first came in, I was business undecided. Then I went to management. Then I added a criminology minor. I'm just not going to go through all of that. Just know I'm here now. Um, originally, I chose business because um, I was scared to major in what I really wanted to major in, and that was criminology. Um, because I thought I was going to be limited to only a certain like certain jobs like I only could be a police officer and stuff like that so that's when my boss not Kate or Jason my other boss um she was like helping me she was like kind of counseling me to like where where should I go so we came up with sociology and it so happened that they had a concentration in crime law and criminology and I had so many open electives that I can do a double minor um, I was in IB. Sadly to say, I didn't get any credits because that was really hard. Um, so it didn't help me at all, like you say you did. So it did not help me. Um, I went to Brownsville. Um, what I plan to do, um, if you know me, I really like criminals, um, people who commit crimes. Um, I love yeah, prisoners, you know, stuff like that. So I did, I want to work in a prison system, but on a federal level. Um, I've had internships. I've had, I have took classes at prisons. Um, so yeah, that's what I really want to do. If it doesn't work out, I would probably like be a probation officer or something like that. So I'm still be working with a form of a criminal or whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> the only advice I have is like follow what you really want to uh, major in. Don't wait till the last minute to change it. Like, don't be scared because, like your senior said, you don't have to um, go in the field that you majored in in college. So I say do what what your dream is. So don't be you know restricted or something like that. That's all I got. <laughs> I can share. So I grew up in a household that was where arts was basically a taboo, like saying that, you know, that I wanted to be an actor was just out of the question. Like 
wanting to have anything to do with the arts was just out of the question. And so it was very difficult for me to acknowledge that that was something that I wanted to do. Um, but when I went to Berkeley, I applied, um, cause you have to apply with a major. I applied for the English major program, mainly because I really sucked at math and I didn't know what else to do with my life. Um, so I, I went into the English program and I, I enjoyed it to an extent. Um, but there were a lot of things that I didn't like about it too. And a lot of it was that right. I felt like writing was very solitary and I love being with people. Um, so after a while I had to find other ways to, uh, fulfill that in myself. So, so I actually joined like a journal and then like a creative writing club at Berkeley and it, it really opened my eyes to all the things that I could actually do with my writing, you know, and I, began to write poetry and plays and do a lot of like creative things and that really filled my soul. And then I thought about it even more and I realized that like acting and the arts was what I actually really wanted to do, but I still didn't really have the courage <laughs> to say it out loud um, and go after it. So I actually took a break between my sophomore uh, senior year at Berkeley um, I got really sick and I had to get brain surgery actually. Um, but that's a whole nother story. But during my break, I did a lot of reflecting and I realized like what I really wanted to go for, which was acting. So after my recovery, I went back to Berkeley and I, I double majored. I took another major in theater. I loved it. I loved it. And I realized that like I could do both. I could write and I could act and it actually supplemented each other really well. Um, so, I mean, for everyone who wants to get into the arts, I totally encourage everyone to go after their dreams. You know, it took me a long time, but it's, it was absolutely, absolutely worth it. And, and I always say like, it's not practical to be unhappy either, <laughs> you know? So that, that's kind of my journey. And if anybody wants to talk about, you know, theater and acting and how to get into that, like, I'm more than happy to share my experiences with you all. Amazing. Thank you all for sharing. We have time for maybe one more. Um, if they can finish before 12.30, who wants to end us off? I can go. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been at DePaul about 30 years as an employee, but I started off my journey as a college student at DePaul. Um, I came in wanting to be a physician, um, wanted to be a great doctor to help my community. Really loved science and biology, been in programs and all kind of stuff. I went to a really good high school, St. Ignatius. So really had an opportunity to step in and have a great experience here at DePaul. But I also had been pretty sheltered during my life, so didn't get the chance to really hang out and do stuff. So when I got here, I lost my mind. I had so much fun. I found out what a gym was. I had a girlfriend and it was over. Um, <laughs> didn't focus on class the way I should, um, just was enjoying this freedom and this life I had. Um, but as a biology major, that's a big no-no because everything is sequential. And when you fall behind, you really fall behind. So I lost my way. Um, I came from a good school. I was a smart kid, but I really wasn't performing well because I just wasn't doing school the way I should. And so um, I didn't, I had to stop being a biology major and didn't know what I wanted to do. So I changed majors multiple times myself, tried all of them, um, really didn't find my niche. Um, I actually got dismissed from the university because I was having way too much fun. Uh, got back in after retaking some courses and kept taking liberal arts courses and I kept excelling at those. I really enjoyed talking and writing and really being around people and um, talking about things that are important and and caring about how people feel. And it led me to my career in uh, higher education because I worked in student affairs um, in a couple of different offices. And I got to work with students, I got to work with professionals and I, I just love the work of higher education, of helping people to see what they could be and to encourage them on their journey. And so um, I graduated from, from DePaul after six and a half years with barely over 2.0 
Um, and um, I really didn't care because the only thing that people care about is I got a bachelor's degree, which I earned. Um, I redeemed myself in grad school. In grad school, I kicked butt. I was the person that I was supposed to be. Um, I got into an honor society. I had a really nice GPA. And I really enjoyed learning and the community that I was in. Um, and so I kind of want to just share my journey a little bit too, because sometimes you really stumble and you really fall. Some of you guys have had some hiccups in your journey, but you haven't really failed where you actually got kicked out and had that moment of dread when you have to share with your parents that you were going to be dismissed. And not because you weren't smart enough to do the work, but because you didn't do the work and you know better. So um, I've had egg all over my face, had it cracked many times, um, had really a lot of opportunities to become humble. And so I unabashedly share this story with you guys because it may help somebody as they go through this journey, as they stumble and fall or as they run into some adversity. It's about finishing and continuing. It's about figuring it out. Um, and I hear about you guys changing majors and stuff. And it just lends to my hypothesis that um, college is backwards. They should allow you guys to figure out what you want to do and to find out what the world of work is before you start committing yourself to a curriculum. It's hard to go in and pick who you want to be when you're 18, 19, 17 years old. And some of us still figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out. I've been in higher education for 30 years and I still am searching for who I really want to be. Um, I like working with youth and I hope that in my time away from DePaul when I retire eventually that I'll be able to do that because that's something I wake up every morning for, not get paid for it and still love it to death. So I encourage you guys to pursue your passion. And if you can get paid for it, God bless you. But the thing is, like Carolyn said, it's about being happy, figuring out who you are, and really, really going on a path where you can be around others and feel fed and encouraged. So um, just wanted to share my story quickly because it's not a perfect ride for a lot of us. And um, we have to figure it out. But when we do, um, it's a nice piece in your life and in your mind. Uh, to know that you're on the path that you're supposed to be and that you're going to be good and great at something. Uh, so thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Daryl. Thank you for all the TAs who shared. Um, we're going to transition now to our guest speaker for today. Uh, they're the Assistant direct, Associate Director of Early Engagement at DePaul's Career Center. Uh, welcome, Hilary Longnecker. Hi, thank you so much, Kaylin. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's so lovely to see all of your faces here. Um, I've been learning a little bit about the College Connect program, and it sounds like a phenomenal, a phenomenal opportunity and program that your your mentors um, and the staff have put together. So, um, congratulations on, on taking advantage uh, of, of the program. I was listening to Daryl's story, and I've known Daryl for a little bit. I've, I've not been here as quite as long as he has, but I've just marked about 17 years at DePaul. And like Daryl, um, I started here as a student. Um, I came to DePaul as a secondary English education major. Um, and interestingly, the reason that I sort of came to that decision um, is that when I thought about my life and the folks that I knew in my life who had gone to college, they were pretty much doctors. Uh, I didn't, unlike Daryl, didn't have aspirations in, in that direction whatsoever. Still don't like the sight of blood. Um, and uh, my, my teachers, my teachers. I was a, a first generation college student and um, I was a pretty good student. I was an honor student. And I can remember uh, you know, being in courses with uh, high school classes with, with friends who were talking about being an engineer. I said, that sounds great, but I don't really know what that is. Um, I, didn't, I didn't understand what that all involved. So uh, my point in sharing that is that I agree with Daryl wholeheartedly. It is so important to take the time to learn about the world of work, learn about the possibilities uh, before putting yourself in a niche, um, in, in a specific little hole where you think that that's the only path to success because there are so many paths to success. And as Daryl mentioned, um, success should really be defined by your happiness. And how you define what's gonna make you happy in terms of a career is so much a part of who you are as an individual. Um, we talk in the Career Center a lot about thinking about your values. I think that's a wonderful place to start because your values are yours to define 100%. 
So some of you may say, you know, my, my values center on helping others. I want to pursue a path that's going to allow me to affect change in society, work directly with individuals and help them in some way. Another person may say, you know, my values have to do with being exposed to as much of this world as I possibly can. Um, learning about cultures and different environments um, is, is key to my happiness. And so maybe travel, you know, having that in, in your career is something that you're really going to be looking at as you evaluate different opportunities. Other, others of you may say like, you know, my values center on being able to care for my family. And so I want to be successful financially and as far as security in my path. So that is something that's going to be a key factor as I evaluate different opportunities. None of those and any of the other career values is inherently better than another. Sometimes we get caught up in this idea that, oh, there's one right way to be a good person in this world or to find happiness in this world. Um, and what I have learned in my term, time in career services is, is that's just not true. I've seen so many students go on to do wonderful and diverse and different things, and they are so happy because they focused on the values. They focused on what was important to them. Values doesn't make the whole ball game here. We also talk a lot in career services about your interests. So when I think about interests, I want you be, to be thinking about what, what motivates you? What makes you want to get up in the morning and go to class? What makes you want to join the student organization to learn more? What makes you want to go to the library on your own, find that book that's not required reading, and, and dig into it? Um, and that can really help direct you. Part of this is your personality. Are you more extroverted? Are you more introverted? Are you detail oriented or big picture? All of those different components of what feels natural and comfortable to you also plays a role. Um, and then the other co component that we often talk about is skills. What simply, what, is, what are you good at? What, where do you have some natural inclination? Um, where can you develop your skills in one direction? Um, you know, and, and just as importantly, what skills do you not want to use? Because you can be really good at something and not like doing it. Um, so that, that's also okay to discover through your experiences. Um, so as Daryl said, I agree. I think that not only do you not want to necessarily approach college as career training, um, but you want to also think about it as an opportunity to learn about yourself, learn about the world, uh, in a way that's gonna allow you to put those two together and ultimately find a path that is going to be exciting for you and then sort of build those skills, those experiences as you go along. Um, so that's just kind of my perspective. I was thinking about that as, as Daryl was sharing his story. Um, if you're curious, I ended up not becoming a secondary education teacher as I thought I would be. Um, I ended up loving my English classes and not so much enjoying my education classes. Um, so I took a big leap of faith. This was huge for me personally, because um, again, as a first generation college student, I saw, you know, I got to train for something. I got to be, um, you know, career oriented as, as my family makes this investment in me. Um, but I realized that um, I just, I loved the study of literature. I loved the critical thinking that went into it. Um, the ability to analyze and really think about what did the author mean? What did they want to express? Um, and I had some mentors, some, some, some folks who said, do it, pursue it. You'll find the path along the way. Um, and I did. Um, I happened, you know, to, like Daryl, to um, happen to find some opportunities to work on campus, um, work as a peer mentor, really discovered how I enjoyed working with students. And even after I graduated, I left campus. I was working as a, a, in, in fundraising for a while, and I just missed it. And I was pulled back within about 18 months <laughs> of graduating back to the university life. So you'll also find through trial and error of, of different types of jobs and different types of environments, um, you know, what, what feels right. The important thing to also remember, and I think my story sort of illustrates it, is that your major, in 99% of cases, does not equal your career. Major does not equal, I don't English every day. Like that's like not my job title, right? So there are so many majors that that is true of. I could have gone so many different directions with an English major. Same is true of a biology major, a marketing major, even like an accounting major. They can end up doing all sorts of different things, whether it's accounting specific or using those critical thinking and analytical skills in a different way. Um, so as you know, you enter college, again, let it be a discovery process. 
discover yourself, discover the world of work. Um, I really liked, like, I think it was Carolyn who said, um, you know, about, about, you know, reaching out to her, talking to her, talk, so talk to people, talk to upperclassmen, talk to faculty, talk to alumni. Uh, also, all sorts of different individuals are going to be available to you. Um, and, you know, both like Kate and Daryl and myself, we've chosen to work in higher education because we, we kind of kind of love this type of thing. We love being able to talk to students. So take advantage, take full advantage of every resource you have available to you. Um, I did, I, I have a few slides, um, Kaylin, if I can pretend, potentially share them. Um, they're a little bit of a, sort of like an overview of what the Career Center does, but I'm going to reframe them in my, my conversation with you to get you thinking about what you should be looking for as you're thinking about colleges, um, things that you can be doing now to help you really prepare for that journey. Sound good? You should be all set to share too. Okay, thank you. So just give me a second, this always takes me just a minute. Um, let's see, share. Sorry, I have so many windows open on my computer right now. It took me a minute to find the right one. All right, there we go. This is the joys of working remotely. Okay, um, I'm going to full screen mode, and I'm just going to fly back up to the top of the presentation here. Um, so as I was saying before, really, you know, thinking about going to college, thinking about educating yourself, it's really about creating your future and that journey is yours to own. I think I've sort of brought that point uh, to the conversation thus far, but at, at the poll, that's so central to the way that we operate in, in the Career Center that it's part of our, our mission. It's part of everything that we do is empowering students to own and shape they're both their personal and professional journeys uh, because they're related. You can't separate the two. Who you are as a person is going to affect how you're going to present and be happy in the workplace. Um, so as you think about university, um, really think about is this a culture, is this an environment that's going to support who I am as a person so that I can become who I want to be as a professional, as a graduate, um, in whatever direction that you're going. One of the ways that we do that here at the Career Center at DePaul is really by using a career communities model. So I talked about accessing the resources. Um, so whether you're looking at DePaul or any other university, you wanna know in the Career Center, what are they offering me? How are they set up? If I am a biology major, can I only see the advisor who sees biology majors, right? Which is great maybe if you wanna be a doctor or, or do research, but maybe, maybe you're thinking about something else because remember your major does not equal your career. Um, so I'm partial, but I think that our sort of setup, the way that we position ourselves um, for students is, is the best way. <laughs> I'll just say it. I think it's, I think it's really well designed in that we're all about empowering you for choice. So that biology major, you know, could access any of these particular um, career communities. Perhaps, you know, they do want to go into healthcare. That healthcare and science uh, community may be good for them. But maybe they're interested in starting a biotech startup. Well, maybe they're talking to the technology and design community, but they're also getting involved in the business entrepreneurship and consulting community. Or maybe they're interested in pharmaceutical sales and advertising. The, you know, there's, a, there's an area within media communications or in business and entrepreneurship that could fit them. Um, so again, really be thinking about, you know, am I going to have access to the resources that are going to be best suited for the things that I'm exploring? The other thing to remember about the Career Center, um, here or anywhere, you don't have to have the answer to that question to come, at, to come talk. So um, I did some focus groups, um, some conversations with our first year students this last year. One of the things we found is they thought, well, I have to know, you know, I have to know what career I want to do to go to the career center because I'm going to ask them, how do I become an accountant or how do I become an engineer? Um, so I want you to really think, and I think this is true of all career centers, um, all of my colleagues across the country, I think would, would co-sign this. Um, career center is a place to figure that out too. You can come and talk to um, our media, communication, arts and, and entertainment um, advisor, Sydney, um, just because you're curious, just because you, you, you're wondering what the possibilities might be. Think of career services just like any other element at the university. It's part of your tuition package. It's something you've already invested in, something that you know, is, is part of the benefits of being part of that university community, um, to take advantage of it from day one. Kaylin mentioned that my title is the Associate Director for Early Engagement. 
early engagement, right? So we don't want you, no university wants you to wait until you're a junior or you're a senior, uh, you know, or you, you've graduated uh, to come in. Uh, but you know, taking advantage early, getting involved with communities like how we've laid them out here can be um, and should be on your mind from day one. Um, but going back to what Carolyn said about just kind of asking, right? Um, reaching out to folks. At DePaul, we have our Alumni Shared Knowledge Program. It's about 1,500 alumni um, that we've invited to be part of this network, and they are at the ready to connect with you, right? Send them an email, uh, set up a phone call or a Zoom call. Um, you know, in post-COVID times, set up a job shadow. Um, you know, find those, or you could probably do that via Zoom. You know, to be to be quite honest, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see that happening. You know, this fall. Um, connect with folks connect with folks who've been in your position um, who've been wondering the same things you're wondering uh, you can do it through a formal program like ask you can ask an upperclassman or a graduate student um, a peer mentor uh, you can ask a, 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 a neighbor you know just really be talking to individuals um, let people know like hey i'm getting ready to think about college or i am thinking about college or i'm applying to college or i am in college when you kind of get to that point um, tell me about your journey tell me about your, how you got to where you are, how you made the decision, and what you feel about that decision now. Let you in on a secret. People like to talk about themselves. Um, they really do, especially people who love what they do. And it's not in a narcissistic way as much as it is um, probably having asked those questions of somebody else along the way and having gotten some guidance, um, having you know been helped um, and wanting to help someone else. And plus, if you love what you do, you get excited to talk about it. So um, you know you, you'll you'll find that you know people are very excited and willing to give you 15 minutes. Um, so that's something that you can start doing now. You can start reaching out to, um, via family members that say, hey, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about marketing. Um, you know, call your aunt, call your cousin. Do you know anybody who maybe knows somebody who, who works in this field? And oftentimes that introduction, um, you know, can be just a great way to start that conversation. One thing that you can totally check out on our website now is our career library. This is something we put out there, free access to anybody, whether they are DePaul student or not. So as you're thinking about, oh, I want to put my resume together for scholarships. Um, I want to really prep for interviews as I'm thinking about a part-time position or, or what have you. We have tons of resources, videos, um, PDFs, guides, all sorts of resources. Um, so I'm just you know, inviting you to take advantage of that I think it'll show you sort of the caliber of resources that we're offering our students. Um, but regardless, it's, it's a useful tool. And so you can see the URL down here at the bottom of the page. It's just go.depaul.edu slash career library. Simple and easy to find. Another thing that you want to think about is where does career happen on a campus, right? So does it just happen in the career center or is it, is it integrated into the larger experience that you're going to have? Um, so, for example, here at DePaul, we have a bunch of career courses, two credit courses that you can take to help you walk through the process um, of career exploration, getting ready for an internship search, um, all, all sorts of different, um, you know, types of approaches to that. Uh, but beyond, so, so the classroom is another place, um, you know, student organizations, are there organizations that have a professional aspect to them that are interested in connecting uh, with alumni, with employers? Uh, you know, look at the whole campus, um, I'll say ecosystem, uh, as an opportunity to explore and prepare for your career. Um, at DePaul, and I think, again, this is something you want to look for, is the opportunity to do experiential learning. Employers love that you get a degree, that that signifies something to them in terms of the types of transferable skills you have developed, maybe some specialized knowledge that you've been able to gain, um, but more than anything, they want to know that you can apply it, okay? Because you're not going to go work for them and sit in the classroom and, and learn more things, right? What you're going to do is you're going to take what you learned and you're going to apply it to meet some sort of pain point or need that they have. So experiential learning, and by that I mean things like internships, job shadowing, um, opportunities to travel abroad. Those are all great ways to not only build your resume, build what you're going to talk about in an interview, but ultimately offer evidence to an employer that you've got what it takes to take what you've learned and deliver on it inside the workplace. Um, 
here on the, on the slide here, you see um, someone who participated in our job shadow program at, um, I think this one is at the Field Museum. So up above in the collection, she got to handle what looks like some sort of creepy crawly snake critter. <laughs> that, that's what, what the types of experiences that we're trying to um, offer, you know, is, is really hands-on and behind the scenes and connecting with somebody who's working in that organization. So she shadowed this woman right here. This here in the middle is a group of our students who traveled to London as part of a course that we offer um, for folks that are interested in working abroad. What could that look like for them? And then finally over here, we've got um, another similar program that takes students to DC um, for individuals who are interested in working at the federal government. So I don't know how I'm doing on time. Okay. Um, I mentioned internships, super important. Research shows that, an that a student who does two or more internships as an undergraduate is far more likely to be employed upon graduation, right? And, I, and, and, and that's the end game. You know, we want to be in a position to succeed. Um, so, you know, certainly internships are going to be key to your experiential learning. Uh, so you want to be asking organizations um, or universities rather, who recruits here for internships? How many do you post a year? What help do you offer um, students in, in securing internships? And then also ask, ask about unpaid internships and what that university does to help students who are in a position where they need to, they, they want to take an unpaid internship. So for example, here at DePaul, anytime an employer posts an unpaid internship, if they are a for-profit company, we reach out to them. And we um, try to sort of educate them a bit on the benefits of paying, because there's research that shows these benefits on both the side of the intern and the employer. Um, but we know that also that's not always possible in certain industries um, and nonprofits or, or um, some government organizations. Um, so we also offer a internship plus program where a student can get a grant um, for uh, the quarter that they are doing an unpaid internship. Um, so that grant is meant to help defray some of that costs that you may be giving up or some of the, that income you may be get, giving up um, because you're doing a, um, an unpaid internship versus you know, some, some part-time hours at a, at a job or what have you so um, and we're not the only program on campus uh, that offers that some of the colleges you know have um, similar opportunities so really inquire about what are the what are the support that that allows students to succeed um, because it's about we want every student to have every option available to them um, On-campus employment um, at our university that does fall within um, the Career Center, and I know you guys have talked a little bit about that previously in some of your sessions, um, but it's a great place to build some skills. So if you're coming to us or any university with you know, not as much work experience or maybe not work experience like in an office setting or something like that, student employment can be a fantastic way to start, a great way to build your skills, uh, build your resume, and then sort of launch that into an internship opportunity um, once you have that kind of under your belt. Also ask about outcomes. Ask where the get universities uh, graduates go, um, at what rate are they successfully employed, um, the standard, is within six months of graduation. That tends, that, that's typically the, the, the standard among universities in terms of how we gauge outcomes. Um, so at DePaul, um, over the, the last um, three years, we've had an average of 91% of our students are either employed or in graduate school, um, or you know, a small percentage have decided to pursue something else. Maybe they're, they're not looking for, for employment at that time, um, but within six months of graduation. And what we do at DePaul is anyone who tells us that they're not in that 91%, we reach out to them personally. Because at DePaul, we don't just send you across the stage and wave you on your way and you know, wish you good luck. Um, our, our services within the Career Center are lifelong benefits. So 10 years after you graduate, you want to switch it up, you want to go on to that next opportunity, um, we support you in that. Uh, so, so kind of also look for that. So in conclusion, I'm also sharing just kind of my um, direct contact information um, here for you. You see my email address um, at the bottom of, of your screen. I would welcome any of you to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have as a DePaul alum, as a representative of the Career Center, um, or to help point you, um, you know, towards somebody else in our office that might be a great fit for you. Um, and that is what I wanted to share. I think I have one more minute <laughs> um, before you guys move on to your next topic. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to chat with you all today. Again, 
congratulations on taking advantage of such a wonderful program. Um, and I would be more than happy to hear from you. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to hear from you and to hear all these amazing things, resources that I didn't even know existed. So I'll definitely be taking advantage of them. Um, and I hope you all do too. But thank you so much for, for visiting and for saying all those things, Hillary. My, my pleasure. And Kayla and Kate, um, feel free to share my email address um, with the group uh, if, if, that's, if I didn't get to capture it there. So thank yeah. you. Thank Thanks, you, Mary. I really appreciate your input. Thank you so much for supporting our program. A hundred percent. Thank you for the invitation. Um, have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank Bye. You. you too. And so. talking about careers, and Hillary mentioned jobs on campus, that can be for professional development or making connections or learning new skills. Um, just so you know, as you saw from Sam and Jorge talking earlier, at College Access, we love hiring our College, college Connect alumni. So, um, when you are done with high school and you are looking for college and you do choose DePaul for your college experience, definitely keep me in mind um, and Jason. We, we always are looking for new people. Every school year we hire a new um, team for um, all the things that we do throughout the year and for the summer programming. Um, so we do hire you guys, the alumni, that the students that we worked with over the years. So if you're ever looking for a part-time job and you're a DePaul student, just come to me and I can almost guarantee that you'll get a job with us. Yeah, so with that in mind and after, uh, after Hillary's presentation, I'm gonna pass it over to Cynthia um, for a Kahoot. So get ready with your devices. Uh, yes, we are gonna play a Kahoot and it's not a right or wrong answer Kahoot, it's more of a poll just to see your thoughts and opinions. Um, so let me just share my screen uh, right here. Um, so just join in. give you all like one more minute to join in. Um, so make sure to put in the pin and of course if you miss out, we won't be able to, to have you on the screen, but you can always participate if you're not playing exactly. My top worry about my major slash career journey is So we have a lot, I'm worried I might lose passion for my major. Um, in second place we have, I have so many interests, I don't know what to choose. And several others chose, I don't know what to major in or I have a passion, but it's not practical. 
Uh, so these are all worries we all have, and it's good to see that you guys are not alone. Um, let's see. Um, as we said, your major doesn't equal your career, so things will change. Um, and like Carolyn said, I really enjoyed what she said. Uh, it's not practical to be unhappy. So if your passion to you or to your family members seems not practical, make it practical and be happy with your life. Um, I think um, the most important thing is to find your passion and be happy. Um, another thing is, I don't know what to major in. Um, I think that's a major concern. Um, like we said, uh, experience and getting involved. Um, and assessing yourself as an individual, um, your dislikes and likes is an important thing. I have so many interests, I don't know what to choose. Um, that is another thing. Um, I think you really have to, um, what's the word? You have to really think deeply about your interests and make pros and cons list uh, to then um, kind of, what's the word? Down. Yeah, to pinpoint what you like. Um, so we can move on. Yeah, to add on to what Cynthia was saying, just basically make sure you research and take your time. Throughout this college experience, you have a lot of soul searching to do and finding yourself. So just make sure throughout that time while finding your major. And if you find your major, your career field, just take that time to research and see what is going to make you happy or what is going to, in the long run, financially keep you stable. So, yeah. And yeah. also to add on, just like taking different opportunities, like you guys even being in this College Connect program was one step to that because whatever class you're in, maybe you want to continue pursuing that as a major career. Maybe you know like now, yeah, I don't completely like this and I'm going to look for another option. So maybe volunteering, like if you want to do something education with children, maybe volunteer like your library, see how you like communicating with children and families or um if you want to be like a vet, maybe you'll um, volunteer at like a uh, with animals, like taking care of them, and just maybe seeing different opportunities, see what you like and what you don't like. Um, that's one thing you can start on doing. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, we can move on to the next. Well, one. once I wanted to add this to also oh, Cynthia. Yeah. That, um, I know nobody has mentioned yet um, as far as this particular meeting but there's also a good possibility that where you are now your major or what you actually going to be doing and pursuing for the rest of your life may not exist yet back when I was in college and there was no such thing as a social media influencer there was no such thing as some of these positions that people do or a YouTube like star there was none of that right that didn't exist when I was looking at majors. So there is a possibility as well that what you may be doing for the rest of your life may not be actually a career or a thing yet. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Thank you, Jason. Uh, let's move on. What are some things you should do your freshman year of college? <laughs> Um, yes, you should be doing all of these things your freshman year of college, getting involved in clubs, programs to see what things you like. Uh, you might discover passions with the clubs you um, are involved with. Um, assessing yourself as an individual. I think you have to know yourself first before you do anything. Um, know your likes, your dislikes, um, your abilities, and the things you need help with. Um, and then take courses that will develop your skills and job functions. Um, if you see a course that seems interesting to you and that might help you in many ways, take it. Um, it could only help you um, to do all of these things. Do we have anything else that we should just suggest? Um, well, coming from a freshman, honestly, uh, uh, for me, being a commuter and stuff like that, um, I had to make sure I got involved somehow, some way, uh, due to the fact that now I'm a facilities assistant as well. Um, with Kaylin, 
Um, that's cool. I'm a peer guide. So just getting involved with those things is great. And it was due to the fact that I did have a connect with Kate, but at the same time, I saw another job that would allow me to get free on house, like free housing. So I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna try that. And I'll have the opportunity to be like an on campus student rather than commuting all the time. Um, assess yourself as an individual. Um, it was a lot of difficulties that I went through mentally and physically. Um, just, just with commuting, it was, it was a wild stress, so forth and so on. So for me, I found time to really just manage my time wisely and just see what I would like and how things I can, how I can plan things out for my future um, here at DePaul. Um, and take courses that will develop your skills and job functions. That was also great. At DePaul, they make sure that you take certain requirements that will actually, that is actually for your major. I know a lot of other colleges wait till like your junior year to do that. But for us, I took tons of computing classes that I've never took before. And I know that those skills and the, that those skills will soon develop with me taking those courses now. So I think that was great. Um, so yeah, these are all correct regardless, but just making sure that you guys are, uh, as a freshman, when you do get the chance to college, just making sure you find your self-interest. So yeah, that's me. Um, okay, I don't know who's doing that. Uh, let's just move on. Um, this doesn't really matter, so let's see. The next question, the resources I should utilize to get help for my major and career goals are... Okay, yeah, we just heard from the one of the representatives of the Career Center, but all of these you should be utilizing. Um, academic advising, this is perfect if you need help with choosing your classes or um, your major. Um, so please take advantage of this. Um, I think for myself, I took advantage of these um, resources very late. Um, so please start from very early on. Um, alumni, if you see somebody who had or who has a career that you're interested in, um, please reach out to alumni and professors. I think those are the most important ones. You will be spending a lot of time with professors. Um, so please just strike up a conversation with them, know their life story to then inspire you, hopefully. Um, anyone have anything else to add? I want to add about alumni. Um, DePaul is a little bit unique in that it has the uh, ask service. So alumni sharing knowledge is a way for students to reach out to alumni to get into contact about jobs, about the professions, to learn more, to make that, to grow their network. And so um, if you go to DePaul, definitely check out the ask network. It's a way to get jobs down the line. So it's really useful, but also keep that in mind as you're searching for colleges if, beyond DePaul. Um, reaching out to alumni is a great resource. So yeah. Um, I also want to add just another quick option, a resource, basically networking. Networking is just creating relationships with like professors, your teachers, even now in high school, your counselors, anyone that you meet really because you never know down the line how you're going to need them or maybe if they're going to be able to give you advice or have, um, have connections with you to um, have a job. So like, for example, like one of my jobs that I have right now I work at a nonprofit, and the only reason I have that is because I was able to get in contact with my eighth grade teacher. So yes, even in college, I went back to my eighth grade teacher, and she was the one who got me connected with this job. So, and then just keep creating connections. I had a meeting with one of my professors. I haven't even started the class yet, but I met with him beforehand, and we talked about just how the course was going to be in general, and then I told him about my interest and then just literally yesterday he emailed me he's like um speaking about like my business interest and stuff like that he was like i just uplo uploaded a job posting if you want to check it out and apply and i was like perfect and he was like we can get an interview going so literally networking is very very important um so keep those connections tight with your teachers and professors can i just say something really quickly since we're talking about majors and careers um, I'm a DePaul alum. I've, I've gone here for my undergrad and then my graduate degree. Um, what's great about DePaul and getting an education from DePaul, when you're looking for jobs, if you want to stay in the Chicago area, 
it's really hard to find a company where there isn't uh, the PO alumnus, which means it is much easier to find a job locally if you go to a school um, that has this really big network of alumni who are willing to help you and willing to give people a break just because you went to the same school and you have professors and other people from the school recommending you. It's a really, really great way into the door of companies from which then you can move up. Um, and also the internship program that we have, the Career Center helps students find internships. They place you in internships that are applicable to your major. You meet people right away when you're still in college. Um, and then those, oftentimes those internships become real jobs that pay a ton of money um, right before you graduate or right after graduation. So looking for that in a college wherever you end up going in your life is very important because just the college degree isn't going to be making you set for life. You need a job after college. Um, so looking for career opportunities and making those connections early, early, early on is really everything. And Chicago is great for that because DePaul has such a huge network. Um, so that's why it's, it's easier to find a job with a DePaul degree in the Chicagoland area. I just want to say from personal experience. Thank you, Kate, um, and everybody else that shared. Um, so we have the last question. Um, let's see. The concept I'm most unfamiliar with, oh, the most unfamiliar with, I'm most unfamiliar with the concept of. We all have, I mean, there's some unfamiliarity with all, all of these, um, but I hope that uh, we provided some several resources to help with this. Resumes, um, we did, what did we do? Oh, well, I don't know what we did. But cover letters, interviewing, job searching. I know for my class, we focus on a lot of these things. Um, job searching, uh, the career center, we just touch upon that. Um, interviewing is another big thing that, you know, we all get worried about. Um, does anybody have anything else to add about these? Yeah, um, interviewing, I, th I feel like um, uh, when I first started, I had a lot of trouble with resume and cover letters. And then when I got to college, there's so many resources to help you out with that. And so many people that have a lot of experience, depending on what you want to study because there is a perfect thing is you know a perfect resume a perfect cover letter but it's literally like depending on where you want to go and what you're actually applying to and how you can modify your resume and cover letter to uh be more appealing to the people who are looking at your um, applications um for me personally i think i what i've been really struggling with is probably interviewing and what i've been told what i've been advised to is to do some mock interviews with some friends which I'm planning on doing um, as soon as the fall quarter starts, you know, getting some of the friends together in like uh, the business clubs and seeing if uh, they'd be willing to do like some mock interviews and stuff like that. Um, for me personally. So. Um, so since cover letters was one of the highest, well, what was the highest um, one that you guys picked that you're most unfamiliar with? I just wanted to briefly go over, but I know um, there are some documents on D12 um, going over it, but just a cover letter is a tool to help introduce yourself. Um, it just has to be a page long, it's not super, super long. Um, it's just a great, a personal touch to add to your job application, um, to go over like information in your resume, particularly that would just like, you introduce yourself, talk about your skills that will like be related to the job position that you're applying to. And then this just expands information for the reader, like taking them on this guided journey of yourself in your greatest career um, development and also your life achievements. And then of course, in the cover letter, you just end it with like saying, um, I'm interested in this position. I hope to um, have the opportunity to interview with you. If you need any other information, please um, let me know and I will be able to provide it at the earliest convenience. So. Um, if you guys have any more questions about resume cover letter interviewing, you can reach out to any of us. We are open to continue talking about this and helping you out with job applications if you're in the process of them. 
Yeah. And we're up to helping you after College Connect ends. So just please reach out. Um, and this is the end of our Kahoot. So thank you. I also you. wanted to point out um, in connection to what Cynthia was saying about connecting to people and networking um, and surrounding yourself with like-minded, ambitious people. I'm sure every TA um, can attest to surrounding themselves with people who are ambitious, who are career-driven and focused. Um, successful people usually surround themselves with successful people, or at least people who want to be, who have the ambition to be successful. Um, so that's going to be important in your journey as far as connecting in your career because you'll feed off each other's energy, whether that's friends or just people in your uh, peer network or people you're connecting to. Um, usually that energy um, is infectious between everyone, um, especially if you're talking about success. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to own your own business, you surround yourself with people who own their own business or those who want to do the same. And then uh, you feed off each other's energy. Thank you, Jason. And let me just stop sharing. So we can move on. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little activity and you were able to reflect and also learn more about the place that you might be feeling a little bit more antsy about. Um, we're gonna transition into breakout rooms now. And so um, this will be the, these will be the last ones you'll be able to enjoy with your full class. So it'll just be a kind of reflection on the program as a whole, as well as specifically the content for uh, this week. So TAs, uh, just kind of ask about what's been going on recently. And then whenever you guys are done, doesn't have to be exactly at 1.30, it can be before or after. Um, students, you're good to go. Just leave uh, the call all together. TAs, please join back to the main meeting uh, when you're done. But yeah. Once you, you get those all surveys, done. remember, complete those surveys. Definitely, yes. Complete those surveys. Look out for more graduation information if you haven't already signed up to join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. And yeah, look out for any communication from us.